my name is Kylie Gerhardt and I'm the dietitian at the ALS Center of Hope in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, today in this video I'm going to be discussing PEG tubes. PEG stands for percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube and it's a small tube that is placed um, for patients that have indications such as choking when they're eating, um, issues chewing and swallowing, anyone that's experiencing significant unintentional weight loss, whether it be their muscle atrophy or they're just not getting enough in, if they're um, having prolonged meal times, if they're experiencing a lot of fatigue when they're eating. Um, sometimes it's also recommended when they're having a declining respiratory status, so if their forced vital capacity is approaching 50% or less, we generally recommend to go ahead and have the PEG tube placed just because it makes the whole procedure a lot easier and it avoids any complications as you will have to be laying flat and you will be under a type of anesthesia and um, with some respiratory assistance. So getting off of the vent will be easier if you have the breathing capacity to support that. Um, other issues are people that are having a trouble with a lot of saliva. Um, the food just isn't really sitting in the mouth correctly. If we notice that their electrolytes are constantly low or maybe their albumin or their prealbumin are low. These are all indicators for the placement of a PEG tube. So this is what the actual PEG tube looks like. It's very durable, stretchy. Um, it can easily be you know, just tucked right into your pants, maybe pushed up into your bra area and no one even really has to know that you have the tube unless you want them to. So the whole procedure is very easy. It takes about 30 minutes at most. You're put under a local anesthesia. You won't feel any pain at all. Um, what they do is they first put an endoscope with a small camera and a small light attached to the tip of it. They thread that down your esophagus and into your stomach. And then they use the light to find the perfect location for the small incision um, from the skin into the stomach. So once they make that small incision, they take the tube, they use guide wire, and they thread it again through your esophagus into the stomach. They pull it right out, and then this bumper here um, keeps the tube into the stomach so that it's not pulling out. And then there's another bumper on the end which is, um, which is attached to the skin and have, also helps so that it's not being pulled around. So this bumper is adjustable if you happen to gain weight now that you have the tube and you're getting normal feeds, they can easily just adjust this bumper so that it's not uncomfortable on your skin or tugging or anything like that. Um, the site care is very simple. All you have to do is wash it every day with soap and water. It's very low maintenance and like I said, it can be easily tucked in so no one even has to know that you have this tube. So now I'm going to talk about how to actually use your feeding tube now that you've gotten it. So it's very simple. You pull it out of your pants, wherever it was. You can just uncap it and you can put you know, your fluids in there. You, you always want to flush it before and after any feeding or any medication. So we'll provide you with syringes and you can fill up the syringes, flush them with fluid. Um, put your feeding, your mix up your crush your medications, mix them with warm water. You can put those in, and then flush it again with general with just water. And then when you're done, you just recap it to make sure that nothing that's um, left behind in the tube is spilling out, and just put it back wherever it was. The whole feeding really only takes about 10-15 minutes, longer if you want, but um, it's very simple. It takes away all of the struggle of having to chew and being fatigued and the long meal times. And so you can actually end up, you know, giving yourself your own feeding and then still being social and going out with your friends, going to restaurants, and no one's sitting there and waiting for you. Or, you, you know, you're so busy trying to eat that you can't talk. It just, it really makes your life a lot easier. So I definitely recommend the tube. Once you have it, it's not like you can't eat anything by mouth, you can. Some, some people get the tube and they only use it in the first few months for you know the water, if they're not getting enough hydration, or if some of their pills are too big for them to swallow. It's an easy way to just have something that, where you can crush it up, flush it through, and not have to worry about it, not have to struggle. So 
Our patients do say that getting the PEG tube is one of the best choices that they make throughout the whole process. And you may never need it, but we like to start the discussion early on just so that you're aware of it, what your options are, and it really is a, you know, a lifesaver for some of these people who are struggling all the time with eating. It, it just makes their life a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. My role as the dietitian is to then prescribe what formula is supposed to go through your feeding tube. So what I do is I calculate out your calorie needs, your protein needs, your fluid needs. Sometimes I recommend obtaining a metabolic study so I can better assess what your um, ex resting expenditure is and what your caloric needs are. And then I also look at your any other diseases that you may have, diabetes, kidney disease, your GI function, and I pick the formula that I feel is most appropriate for you as well as the volume and how much you should be getting of that formula every day. I'm always available for any changes. You know, patients will email me or call me and be like, Kylie, that's not working. I have diarrhea or I'm feeling too full after feedings. I'm not full enough. I'm still hungry. So it's, we're always changing things around, seeing what works best for you because not every patient is the same. Um, another thing that I hear a lot about is patients want to make their own formulas at home. So this kind of feels more like an actual meal to them. You can smell the food, you can kind of maybe taste the food if, if you burp it up or something like that. So they want something that's more real. And I encourage this, but I also just want to make sure that they're working with the dietitian to make sure that they are getting the right amount of macronutrients. Um, you don't want it too you know, heavy in protein, but not enough carbs or not enough healthy fats, so I like to work with patients to really pick out what should be going into these shakes that they're making at home. Um, you can even do just maybe one homemade shake a day, but then use the commercial tube feed products for the rest of the day. I've seen patients do that too. So it's always important to work closely with your dietitian when using the PEG tube just to make sure that you're getting exactly what you need every day. I hope you found the information in this PEG tube video beneficial. And we are always here for you regarding any questions of, should I get a PEG tube? What's the procedure like? We're always here to answer your questions.